Kiva. And I'm Jake from Tiny Nest. And I'm Rob from Iron Eagle Trailers. We used an Iron Eagle trailer for our tiny house project and we're super happy with it. We still get a ton of questions about the trailer, so we decided to make a video showing all of its features and design in greater detail and how that affected our build. And also some of the changes to the design and new techniques that we've learned that would affect how we do things differently next time. We're visiting the Iron Eagle headquarters in Troutdale, Oregon, which is east of Portland. And I've got the owner, Rob, here to help answer some questions about the trailers. So first of all, Rob, maybe you can just explain some of the reasons why this trailer is special. Sure. Uh, well, firstly, we designed this trailer from the ground up, uh, specifically as a tiny house foundation. For instance, it has a, a recessed floor cavity. Uh, we've maximized the width. There's a fender flashing option here to keep the weather out. And the entire frame is made of tubing, which is very lightweight. We really liked this sunken floor cavity because it allowed us to drop in a fully framed and insulated floor structure down beneath the height of the deck, as opposed to building it on top of the deck, which would be using up some of our maximum height that we have to work with, since if we wanted to take our tiny house on the road, it's limited to a maximum height of 13 and a half feet. One change that we made to the frames that, compared to the trailer that you have is that we increased this dimension here from 5 inches to 6 because two by sixes are five and a half inches tall. It made the build so much easier and quicker. Yeah, when we built ours with the five inch depth and we used two by sixes, we had our framing sitting a half inch up above the deck height. And so we came up with a solution to deal with that. But six inches actually provides more options of how you want to sit the framing in there. At the end of this video, we'll provide links to all of our building episodes showing us doing work with the trailer. Another option that's new that's been requested a lot is this bottom pan flashing. It's 22 gauge galvanized steel and it's completely sealed. We really liked how the last three inches of the width extensions are these thin metal flanges. They're 3 16 inch steel and the framing, like the wall framing, sits partially over top of them. And that provided us with a lot of options for how we could secure that framing to the trailer. We actually passed threaded rod all the way through the framing and secured it that way. And again, we'll provide a link to how we did that at the end of this video. But it was also great that we didn't have to line our framing up with anything on the trailer to make that work. We just designed the framing the way it would make most sense for the, the structure. And then we could just choose the best location to drill through and complete that securing of the framing to make it all nice and solid. We've been asked a few times about the strength of this flange, but it's important to keep in mind that it's only the last three inches that are this thin. The rest of this extension is solid structural framing. We've made a few changes to the side extensions and the outer flanges on the trailer since the trailer that you have. Uh, one is we've pre-drilled the uh, bottom plate mounting holes for the walls about every 30 to 36 inches. So if it lined up with your framing, you could just use these and skip a step, but if it didn't, you could always just drill through it like we did. A change that we made after watching your tiny house build was uh, we added the flange to the front and the rear. Right, because our model only had flanges on the sides, so we had to anchor our front and back walls differently. Another thing we should mention is that we actually passed electrical and plumbing through the flange as a way to get into the wall cavity because it's sitting right over top. Uh, and avoid having an extra penetration on the exterior, like through the siding. Because the width extensions are fairly wide, 10 inches in this case, we've had some questions about the implications of having the last bit of your flooring over top of this metal. And so to address that, we need to look at the different ways that you could anchor your floor framing into the cavity. As you can see on this frame, uh, we've pre-drilled these holes, uh, which allow you to attach the rim joist to the inside of the frame. Uh, it's the same as you have on your trailer. That's right. And then with the extra depth here, the six inches versus our five, we could potentially either mount that framing so that the top is flush with the deck of the trailer and just have the, uh, the flooring right over top of this if we weren't concerned with uh, it being particularly cold, like if our climate was warm. But conversely, we could just mount that framing a bit higher or use thicker framing like 2x8 or something instead of 2x6 to purposely get that framing 
proud of this level and then lay down uh, insulation like a rigid foam maybe uh, so that when the flooring comes out over top of this area there's a thermal break between it and the potentially cold metal of the trailer. One other thing about the way this is is that there's no metal cross members at deck height which means we won't have any metal directly underneath our finished floor. And we have to keep in mind that metal is a great conductor of heat. So in the winter when it's really cold outside and the whole trailer is cold, if we did have those cross members, they would bring that cold all the way across and we'd have cold spots or more like cold strips underneath our floor. A challenge we faced with our build was how to lay out our plywood panels for our subfloor. Our trailer was eight foot, two inches wide, so just over eight feet, meaning a single eight by four sheet of plywood wouldn't quite cover the whole thing. So we actually used two sheets per section, staggering them. And after reviewing this method with Rob, we actually determined there was a much more efficient way we could have done it. And that would have been to lay down at least the bottom plates of our wall framing first, and then basically doing the subfloor in between them. So starting with that eight foot two and subtracting the width of those walls, we would have been just under eight feet, meaning a single sheet uh, would cover the whole span. And that would also affect it lengthwise, meaning we would have used a lot less material and it would have been a lot easier task. Another option that we have is fender flashing. And the purpose of this is to prevent weather and rain from entering your house. So this was a really important option for us because of our rainy climate. And the way we made best use of it was to bring our wall framing up right in behind and then have our exterior sheathing come down in front to layer it for water shedding. A uh, frequent request we've had from builders is a need for a narrower frame. And so here's an example of a frame that's seven inches narrower than our maximum width. And it's to accommodate whatever features they have in their build. So the effect that that could have is how much you can build out past your framing. So we had a trailer that was eight foot, two inches wide. And because of our climate, we put a rain screen in behind our siding and there were several layers there. And we pushed right out to the eight and a half foot road legal width limit. Um, but if we knew we were building for a drier climate, we could have gone with say an eight foot, four inch wide to start and then just had one inch on each side for siding and then we would have gained a couple inches on the inside of the structure. And then for something like this, it may be because a roof overhang is required, and that also needs to be considered as something that could potentially push you over that uh, legal width limit. Obviously another big concern when building a tiny house is weight. We actually weighed all of our materials as we were building to make sure we weren't going to exceed the weight rating of our trailer. Our 20-foot trailer is rated at 10,000 pounds and weighs about 1,600. So we had the remainder, just over 8,000 pounds, to work with in terms of what we could build onto the deck. Here's a 24-foot trailer. Uh, this was rated at 14,000 pounds, yet weighs uh, less than 2,000. An option that we have is leveling jacks, and they're installed on each corner of the trailer and they allow you to level your house. And that's also something we got on our trailer. Thanks for having us and helping us go over all the details of this type of tiny house trailer. Thanks for coming. As promised, here are the links to all of our relevant building episodes. First of all, if you want to see how we designed our structure in 3D, check out episode 4. And if you're interested in designing your own tiny house the same way we did, check out this video. If you want to see how Jake and Rob built a floor in the new trailer design, click here. And if you want to see how we built and secured our floor, watch episodes 6 through 8, starting with 6, here. If you want to see how we initially secured our walls to the trailer, check out episode 10. And see how we finished it off with threaded rods in episode 14. You can see how we lapped our sheathing over the fender flashing in episode 12. And see how we did our siding in episode 25. And you can see how we passed plumbing through the flange in episode 31. Like Vanna White it, but always face forward. I'm filming it.